Do the trashy pulp novels of the world have anything to offer? Our bestseller is all they're cracked up to be. Here at Terrible Book Club, we explore whether you really can judge a book by its cover or its ridiculous synopsis. You ever passed a book and thought, ugh, who's reading this? We probably are. You know, Paris, I I would like to apologize. Yeah, to me, to listeners, yeah. to the world. Yes, <laughs> to you especially, because here we are, um, having experienced something <laughs> terrible, right? Like, really, I know that's the name of the show, but, like, to put you through the torture that just happened... <laughs> You had to read this all in one go. Yeah. Speedily. And, and we're starting recording four hours late because I just could not like I just it was I feel my brain cells dying. I Again, can feel I, Paris, I want to apologize to you, not just for this book, not just for this one. But like, you know, nine years ago or whatever, standing in the kitchen together <laughs> and I open my stupid fucking mouth <laughs> and I say, let's do a podcast about reading terrible books that led to today yes. and the injury that I have <laughs> caused you, my close friend, <laughs> someone I care about. So I'm sincerely sorry. Yeah, man, this is the first book we've read that has... um given me heart palpitations now this is a health problem i'm currently dealing with but and like i'm pretty sure it's set off by anxiety this fucking book made my heart palpitations come back that is what we're dealing with today i feel disconnected from reality i felt disconnected from my body which is why before i sat down to record this i had an entire box of macaroni and cheese Two giant spoonfuls of cookie butter, three servings of vegan marshmallows, and I am now on my second alcoholic beverage of the evening. <laughs> the, the most grounding meal possible. I I don't, I just, I needed to feel something that wasn't pain. <laughs> like, I, I needed, okay. oh, I needed to feel like I was tethered to the <laughs> earth and that I was still here. Um... We're not here anymore, Paris. I have bad news for you. <laughs> it's, it's all over. Oh, fuck. Okay, hello and welcome to episode 166 of the Terrible Book Club. I'm Chris, and this is Paris. Yeah, it's, Maybe. Well, it's Who what, knows what, what remains, we are anymore? It's what remains of Paris. I can say that much. This time we read Splattering Yet Endearing by Philip Yang. I found this on Reddit. Where it was posted to various subrelated related to men writing female characters, also sort of like feminist meme subreddits that I will peruse from time to time. Everyone was horrified. Um, so, of course, I had to bring this to Paris again, like an idiot. <laughs> um, it was up on Amazon for a bit, but it was pulled from Amazon. Who knows exactly why? Maybe the author had a change of heart. And for that, I guess I can commend something good came of this in that it's no longer easily accessible. But someone managed to save it on an archive.org page. Thanks to them, our minds are now poisoned. I'm going to say, Chris, this is actually pretty easy to find if you know the title. Uh, it'll just pull up the archive <laughs> link. But um, yeah, I don't really know much about this other than uh, my guess is that the author probably took everything down after he was skewered on the internet. I, I didn't see the post myself, but, you know, Chris told me about it and I, you know, you gotta assume that someone writing something this heinous and 
posting didn't they post it themselves on reddit wasn't that what happened I'm not sure. I don't. Mm. I forget that detail. And yeah, f- of course, you and I can now kind of litigate. Like, well, they took it down. Maybe we shouldn't be reviewing something that is gone. From, but I gotta tell you, man. No, this no, is... no. This no. Once you put it out there, and you're like, "This is my finished work. Here you go, world." I mean, this person. I do. Okay, okay. So before we get too far in, I, I would like to explain. Typically, we don't do too much digging or like any kind of research on the author of the book because we want to keep our minds uh, clear. We just want to judge a thing based on our experience. We want to talk about our experience, our likes and dislikes when we're reading the book. So we try not to taint that uh, by doing too much background reading on things. Once in a while, we might feel it's appropriate to do that. Um, In this case, I, I cannot look at this thing because it feels like looking directly into the sun during an eclipse and i don't want to do any more research um no the paris this feels like someone pressing your face into (laughs) the sun for your eyes all the way into your skull yeah um all right so i know we really just kind of rolled into it today i i'm sorry folks i this book is Put me off, off my shit. This oh. hurts, man. <laughs> yeah. Can we please continue so we can get into <laughs> right. th- this so right. I can... <laughs> mm. I'm, I'm stretched. I'm ready. All right. All right. I'm good. Okay. The food is hitting me. The food is hitting All right. me. I have my second All right. beverage. I'm... All right. <sighs> if this is your first time listening to this show, what we I'm do... I'm sorry. We, yeah, uh, yeah. Please just shut this <laughs> off and listen to literally any other fucking episode. Don't listen to this one first. It's not going to be fun for anyone. <laughs> okay. You need to work up to this. Yeah, yeah. What we do here at the Terrible Book Club is we read books that we assume will be bad based on their cover, title, summary, or some combination of the three. Uh, sometimes we read books that our patrons, listeners, or friends recommend. So we typically do the opposite of what most people do when they're in a bookstore or while they're browsing the internet. And usually this experiment results in a hilariously disappointing read. Although once in a while we do actually end up liking the book. So we read the book and then we review it on the podcast. So you don't have to read it <laughs> and maybe you can have some laughs with us. All right. Um, content warnings for today. It's just everything. The content yeah. warning is every, any, every single bad thing you can imagine you know, just shut this episode off again. I'm. This is the yeah, second turn time. Yeah, off. <laughs> just, just listen. Give up. <laughs> I know that's not good for like podcast metrics and stuff to be like. Don't actually just turn the whole thing off. But I, for your mental stability, I would recommend reconsider. <sighs> well, yeah. I, well, I, I would say you should reconsider if this is your first episode of the show. I yeah. Please listen to another episode. And two, if you are somebody who doesn't want to listen to something that has misogyny, racism, sexual abuse, blood drinking, uh, allusions to rape and sexual assault, physical violence. Um, I don't know. I'm sure there's other stuff in there. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of all the top line hits of like shit you probably don't want to hear about. So if any of those things are a problem for you, please choose another episode. Um, yeah. how do we how do we want to handle this reading? Okay, so typically before we get into a review, we like to read the kind of the back of the book summary so you, the listener, understand what this book or this work was trying to do, like was was profess what what it was professing to be to the world. Um, Chris, would you like to read this or would you like me to read this? How how do we want to do this one? I'll do the back of the book All right. and the characters, and you can do the summary that I wrote to try and wrangle this into some kind of coherent plot i added a couple of lines i don't know that it helped but i tried okay we'll see all right take all right. take her so away chris th- to hook you into the book we've got this on the back i have been an adult for a few years now my life as i know it has completely changed because of this girl porn the name that's the guy's name he's signing the back of the book anyway continuing romantic partners are dying from an acute and highly fatal disease public health is helpless there are no survivors except there's plenty of survivors porma has just moved in with the tenny his old high school crush this is his chance 
to start a life in a new city, sharing a bed with the girl of his dreams every night, he is getting used to his new main home, when he, main the state. When he isn't thinking about her, Ateni is wondering about her body and her new roommate. This is her chance to keep everything normal, but she wants something from him too. She keeps hiding in the bathroom when she isn't quietly staring at him. Presented like a screenplay, Splattering Yet Endearing is an adult contemporary romance series, the magic 106.7 of books, <laughs> with elements of sci-fi, <laughs> mystery, and more. If you like deep, immersive stories with visceral action in and out of bed, you'll love reading this intimate series. But if you don't know what Magic 106.7 is, it's got a gentleman named David Allen Boucher on it who comes on for bedtime magic. He's like, listen to some Barry Manilow and some Kenny G. That's... Uh, that's what I think about when I hear adult contemporary. That ain't what's happening here. No, it's not. Okay. So, luckily, there's only two characters. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, We have Porma with an M. Not Porna, although this is a completely porn-suffused being here. P-O-R-M-A. He. This is a man who ostensibly enjoys food and sex and video games. Wow. What a character. Um, a Tenny is a woman slash possible demon. That's all I got. And the setting is their vaguely described apartment, which has a basement room that they, has one bed that they sleep in. There's a couch that he sleeps on sometimes, but they share the bed together. Also, there's two showers, but no. one... There's two showers, really? but there's one basement bedroom. There's two and showers? And then a living room. I don't remember. Yeah, there's two showers, showers because at okay. one point, in the, I, Paris, I know I encourage you to skim hard on this one when I told you about it. No, just I just skimmed Take my the, word for it. Just, there's two showers. I just skimmed the video game stuff. Um, okay. All right. So I I am going to read the very brief um Summary. So we normally do a plot summary based on our experience so that as you're listening to us discuss the work, you understand at least the basic elements of what happened, the order of things, you know, major action points, the uh, peak of the action, the denouement, you know, all of that stuff. Um, unfortunately, today, I just, I just have a bunch of loosely connected sentences for you, and I, <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot promise you um, a plot or continuity or anything you know, coherent. So, On top of that, I promise you no context we could give will explain anything better. Yeah. Even if you read the whole book like us, you would still have no context to give or understand. Correct. I just realized my microphone was pointing away from my face for a lot of that. Sorry, future Chris. All right. So this. All right. So here is here is the. Um, you know, I'm going to call it the content summary. I'm not going to call it the plot summary this time. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Porma lives with Iteni. They share a bed for no discernible reason because they're just roommates, supposedly. Porma is an escort who drives his own limo, but also works at a gas station and a supermarket that Itenny sells condoms at. She chews on her hands in the bathroom at night and does other inexplicable things like getting into the shower with Porma, walking around in only jeans, and drinking an entire can of bug spray. They live a really dull life where all they do is watch TV or, in Itenny's case, get super hammered when they're not working. Parma keeps having weird experiences with Iteni that defy explanation, like waking up outside on their mattress after going to bed. They get food together a lot, and Iteni has a lot of different outfits that all hug her curves. She also drinks Porma's blood, eats meat, and chews on rocks. Iteni is clearly some kind of vampire or alien or something who is using Porma as a food source, but Porma wants to have sex with her constantly, so he doesn't really care. She has him suck her breast milk in the parking lot of a mall, which is so cool and good that Porma cries while he sucks her breast milk. Which implies she might be pregnant because you wouldn't be lactating. Paris, if... I promise you, when the author wrote this story, pregnancy was not part of that. I promise oh, you, he no, just like, boobs no, have milk in them all the time. I will refute you with something from the text. <laughs> with, with context yes. from this? I submit you cannot. <laughs> We'll get back to that. Let me finish. <laughs> After a whole lot of scenes of them fucking, groping, sleeping, going to work, watching TV, 
Poor man decides he wants to take a bus to a beach in the winter, and Itenny drives him to the bus station. Once there, a bunch of random people accost them and call Itenny a fucking alien and a life-sucking bitch, so clearly her being some kind of monster is not a secret. The police are also scared of her. She eventually stops speaking and only communicates via post-it notes for a period of the book. And then it's tr quickly dropped. Yes. Uh, sometimes widowing, a disease that affects couples and also may cause gender-based segregation of humanity, is mentioned in news reports. It never really comes up other than that. Sometimes Itenny and Porma play an ultra-realistic VR game that is also irrelevant. Sometimes there's a full restaurant menu or an entire fake song written out. It ends suddenly, like this summary. Okay, so if you've lost your grip on anything that resembles reality, so have we. Welcome. All right, oh, Paris. Yes. Paris, all right, you ready? Things that were good. Nothing. Moving on. Nothing. There's nothing. Not, let's, okay, continuing. Is, Things that were look, bad. you might think, before we go on, I'm going to say, you might think we are being uncharitable. We are fucking not. You know us. We are more than charitable on this show when trying to pick out things that were good in a work. This book-like monstrosity has no good attributes. I do not know what else to say. Don't read this it. is not coming Don't from Don't ever a, read it. It's not coming from a place of like uh vitriol or it's just it is just a fact. There there are no things good about this. It is there is nothing. There is nothing. You can't. I. If you're here you couldn't even jerk romance? off to this, Chris. Like this yes, isn't it's like sexiness. There's not. No, not even that. Right. Like it doesn't accomplish anything that it could possibly maybe be doing. Like it's it's not sexy. It's not romantic. It's not interesting. Um. It's not well written. It's incoherent. Um. It's not paced well. It is extremely confusing. The ideas in it are bad and poorly fleshed out. The names are weird. I the title is strange. Like I I don't know. <laughs> I can't. I and I I just I feel so terrible because I I hmm. like a a project of mine. You know, as I have been an adult for a few years now, <laughs> a project of mine has been to uh, try to embrace compassion more be more empathetic try to really see all sides of things and I agree. you know not be reactionary and shitty and like you know judgmental but and, and there is a part of me that still maintains some compassion for this author because how could you move about this world Put this out into it, thinking it is a book that people are going to purchase. And also, sell your um, writing and editing abilities when the reality is so far from like any of that being marketable or worth anything. I just I don't know how you can move through the world like this. It just makes me deeply sad that someone has had such That's an, definitely the feeling that I had too. Yeah, like such an isolated life um and one that probably involves a lot of hatred of women and resentment, you know, that you would end up with something like this. That that is something that strikes me. Um so I am I am holding on to that as I also hold on to a giant hammer like Mjolnir in my hand just like uh, smashing this thing, you know. I, I, and I'm sorry. I'm really rambling. I'm not sticking to the script because I'm, I'm just so overcome with very strong emotions that I'm having a hard time. <laughs> Say, Paris. I find sometimes our episodes are mildly reflective of the work that we've done. Like when the book is kind of boring and mediocre, so it's the episode. Hmm. When it's got a lot of weird stuff happening in it, we get weird. <laughs> yeah. When this book, like I, it starts out confusing, and the whole time I was reading the notes you were putting down here, and you just kept repeating what, what. <laughs> 
Yes. What? Yes, like every did. single time. Paris, I when I first read this, I told you like, listen, you're not going to get much out of reading this closely. And I promise you, if, if any one of you find a copy of, of this book out there, just like, you know, start at the top and just flick your scroll wheel as hard as you possibly can a random number of times. And I promise you, wherever you find yourself in this story, you will be perhaps less confused than I became as I read the entire thing. This is like, this is incel Ulysses, okay? Yeah, like, I, I, man, that is, first of all, one of the funniest things you've ever said. And also, thank you. the most, perhaps the most accurate description of what, we're looking at here i mean i never i mean i i barely looked at ulysses ulysses is like a curiosity i've i've not sat down and read the thing um in its entirety but i would rather read that by far for sure yeah i mean it's famously sort of incomprehensible from my understanding having read like a chapter or two of it being like i don't have the brain for this yeah i also didn't have the brain for this so well, I yeah mean, i mean i i remember just not being interested in the general topic too i mean it was so long ago i was probably 14 but in any case yeah this this is this is in cell ulysses and i i hate kind of i mean i hate to categorize someone that way but I, I mean they're showing all the signs they've got all the signs and symptoms of um, yeah you know i mean we routine he routinely ref like <laughs> will just break out into calling her like slut whore cunt like just out of the blue because she is existing because she is standing there doing nothing but then a line later, he's like, oh, my God, I love her. She's so perfect. That fucking whore cunt. And you're like, whoa, what? It And there's just a visceral hatred uh, underlying a lot of the dialogue and the main character's inner thoughts. And I don't know, man. Like, I know this stuff exists. And we've read a lot of misogynist, like, right-wing conservative stuff on the show. We've read stuff that's had sort of, you know, incelly, incelish flavor. Uh, but this this is concentrate. This is like <laughs> the, that puckering like lemon the concentrate. Breaking, <laughs> like breaking bad blue crystal meth level misogyny. Like Yeah. Okay. So I do you want to just start from I our notes? Describe... Can we start can we start with the notes now that we're trying to okay. realign let's, here? Let's try Let's let's try. Well, eventually we're going to get to a point where we're just going to start reading random we pull will quotes be, out of yes, this. Yes, we will be reading selections. There, it has to be done, no matter how painful. When we read it, it, it has like a copyright page, like that thing, and like all rights reserved and everything. And I don't know if this was like a formatting error or something. But you're reading here, like this is a work of fiction. Names, characters, businesses, places, events are, are yeah the products of the. Austin's imagination, blah, blah, blah. Dialogue is bold. Dialogue generally alternates between speakers on every new dialogue line, unless otherwise indicated. Signage are bold, too. I have been an adult for a few years now. My life as I know it has completely changed because of this girl. I had nowhere to go three months ago. Itani had the extra space. Wait, I'm reading the story now all of a sudden. Yeah, like, and it says chapter one, but it but chapter one includes all of the incidentals, and then the story starts... Also, I would like to note that if you have to give me, um, like, if I have to go through a tutorial to understand how your book works, you've probably <laughs> already made a critical error. <laughs> like, yeah, so as Chris mentioned, there is a section that's like, oh, the dialogue is bold and dialogue alternates between speakers on every new line and signs are bold. A little bit above that, it says, editor's note, I probably messed up how to use some types of dashes. Bite me. I also messed up the punctuation of action beats that go with dialogue. There's songs in this that I will delete in the final version of this writing. So just fix it now. Yeah, I mean... What is it? What are you editing like, then? Also, like, he clearly used his personal email address and put it in 
the incidentals and like credits at the front of the book and i don't know why you would ever do that like create uh you know if you want to create like a you know prof- your author email i guess but using your just regular ass email <laughs> probably not a great plan um yeah so just immediately you know the title is weird you're like splattering yet endearing what does that even mean i mean i'm pretty sure it's come right like that's that that would track that's uh- Honestly, that's the theory I had before I read it, and after reading it, I'm cut. I came back around to yeah, it's come probably. That's the only thing. I, perhaps blood. Yeah, maybe so blood or come. Um, but either way, it's not. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to formulate how to explain why splattering yet endearing is not a good title. Um. I think it just has to do with conventions of the English language and descriptions and how English speakers will describe things. And, and those, those words in that order, (laughs) you know, just don't occur. They don't really gel with how people interpret English text. Right. So this is like a, a very specific semantic thing. And, and as I was reading this, I did begin to wonder if English was this person's first language. Um, You know, so trying to hold a little space for that, like Mm -hmm. maybe that is also a problem here. Maybe that is, you know, we, I believe this is a situation where we have many very large problems compounding into each other to create one, one mistake of just astronomic proportions and I, I it's possible I mean th- but then again there were other things about it that made me think no this person is a native English speaker so I was a little torn about that but that would explain a lot of the oddities we're seeing in the language it still doesn't I'm still not excusing this by any means as a whole but it could be a factor here all right so you know title's fucking weird the beginning is janky and unclear i mean i have been an adult for a few years now it's just why would you start a book that i i i don't i don't know why that would be where you why why is that the sentence uh, yeah, that's um, often how I felt. Often, yeah. why is that the sentence? Yeah. Why? Oh, this new sentence. Why is that the sentence? Uh, yeah, and like, like there are other choices. Specifically, actually, we should talk about the um, the songs and menus. Okay, so I feel like this is an a world building error. You know, where where people think the underwriting about you know dis- like descriptions or. Uh, world context needs to like that somehow how how do I say this that um, length equals depth almost right so instead of (laughs) like it's like the dimensions are wrong oh my god it's a non-euclidean he has the same idea of like what makes good sex versus (laughs) what makes a good book just bigger (laughs) better oh shit you're not wrong not wrong (laughs) yes obviously if it's bigger it's better so so what we mean by that is whenever there is music in the book which happens probably half a dozen times maybe six or seven times there's a song playing or you know they're in a store restaurant or there's a song i think it's usually when they're home um the author will actually write out all of the lyrics to the song in in like block format and and he will also write out every like repetition so if a chorus and he puts like the ad lib is like the ooh yeah and stuff uh-huh, like, yeah am, <laughs> am i supposed to imagine there was like a backing vocalist happening here or is this the main character just like doing the backing vocals and ad libs by themselves in their room like because i is this supposed to be a musical i you know well it did. It did say in the back of the book summary that it was presented as a screenplay. I mean, in which you know our experience with uh, I almost said Fifty Shades of Darkness with um, uh, the <laughs> what was it called? Episode fifty, the Eclipse of Darkness. Yes. 
um, that was something that was presented as a screenplay. And I remember we actually went to our screenwriters on Reddit and we were like, screenwriters, we present to you, us, ourselves, the lonely, <laughs> terrible book club. Help us understand what is a screenplay supposed to be? This is what we were given. And they were all like, we had many people being like, that is not that's not a fucking screenplay. <laughs> and, what is yeah, this? And, Are you guys okay? Yeah, they were very helpful. Um, and so because of that experience, I felt prepared to go into this and know immediately if this was a screenplay or not. It's not a fucking screenplay. It's not a screenplay. It's not written like a screenplay. I don't know why it says that. But you're right. I think I think this author didn't really know what he was doing and wanted to write it quote unquote as a screenplay so because of that he writes out like I said there's all this really bizarre detail overly overwritten underwriting on like (laughs) clothing and and we get entire menus you know what I'm gonna read you a menu (laughs) 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 okay if you wanted to hear an entire fake steakhouse menu welcome to terrible book club here you go You you know what occurred to me I actually think it could be real, which is even worse. Um, oh, my God. Because it just... Oh, where did it go? Where is that... Why is he filling this out? Like, we like the we need just more words on here, which makes it better. Like, are you getting paid by the word here? Like, one of those old penny stories? No, <laughs> that's the thing. There's no way. No one's paying for this. <laughs> ah, here we are. Um, I, I want to add... Par- Hold on a second, Paris. Before you do yes. that, I would like to clarify to the listeners that th- there is two menus in here. There's the steakhouse <laughs> menu, and then there's the fast food place Correct. menu. Correct. You don't have to read both here, but just go ahead. Re- here you go. Here's full text of what appears in here. All right. <clears throat> I navigated to the steak place's website. <laughs> website, colon, open parentheses. Roster's Steakhouse, since 1994, serving Maine's best steaks. Featured menu, all meat entrees include... <laughs> side juice from roasted... Juice from roasted... Come on, it's just a fucking steakhouse menu, Paris. You can read a steakhouse menu without cracking up, please. I'm sorry, Chris. I, I don't know what's left of Paris, but she might not have the steak menu in her. <laughs> okay. If you're wondering, well, like, did green you, peas, so, listen, wild did you rice, catch that baked potato, <laughs> baked sweet potato, french fries, and curly seasoned fries, meats, brown dye, eight ounces, nine ninety nine, piping hot, and one of our best sellers. <gasps> This round, tender, juicy steak. Tears are streaming down my face. <laughs> it's a fan favorite. Served with butter. <laughs> Prime iron. It's, ju- it's <laughs> 12 ounces. Like, it's just all there. $15.99. <laughs> Better than Prime. Paris, I, 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 I think you're going to suffocate if you read this entire steakhouse menu. So okay. I'm going to ask you as your friend who has harmed you enough already. No, no, no. I can do this. So please... Each steak <laughs> is individually checked for the roster seal of quality with the signature mouth melter meat served with celery and ranch sauce. Eye of rib, 10 ounces, $12.99. <laughs> Ribeye, seared with 12 seasonings and spices, a local favorite. Top of the sirloin, 8 ounces, $11.99. Top, top, Top sirloin with our head chef's recipe grilled to perfection with a dollop of butter and fresh herbs on the side. Combo meals. <laughs> two for two for meal deal. $19.99. Pick two meat entrees on one side and finish off with a sweet dessert. Super two for meal deal. $29.99. Pick two meat entrees, two sides, and two desserts, including our ultimate desserts. Other meats. Roster's chicken. Two for us. Other meats. $8.99. World famous Roster's mother's family recipe: 100% white meat, boneless chicken breast, perfection. Rib of eye, half rack, 11.99. Tender ribs with Roster's signature rib sauce. Serve with mashed potatoes, sides, roasted corn, green peas, wild rice, baked potato, baked sweet potato, French fries or curly seasoned fries, 2.99. Desserts: chocolate serenade, 3.99. Three types of chocolate combined in this dark and satisfying mixture for a savory cake slice. 
Orange Dream 599 orange juice in fru- infused frozen yogurt with desserts. real cream combined for a compelling frozen treat. Chester's Cherry Pie 399 real cherries and house-made crust make this the fan favorite slice of dessert oh. at Roster's. Ultimate desserts, ultimate chocolate bombs, oh 799 God. experience Please. a milk, white, and dark chocolate mini cake baked with cookie <laughs> and brownie pieces. Chester's ultimate cherry orange pie, 699. Real cherries and real orange juice combined for a zesty yet sweet and soft baked pie. Chef's favorite slice. Unplug your headphones. From Roster's your headphones from Roster's your device, ultimate on, cheesecake, 999. And just let everyone hear what's going on. Milky, smooth, and cheesy. This cheesecake is infused with a nut medley and a scoop of chocolate ice cream atop each slice. End parentheses. Sorry. There it is. Sorry, Full I died. Roster Steakhouse menu. <laughs> if you want world building, there you have it. Right? So I want to clue everyone back into the first line that you read before the steakhouse. But he he describes himself. I sat down and I went to the website. I typed it uh... into the... Like, the painstaking detail for shit that I don't need painstaking detail. There is a section later on. Let me read this section. I push on the men's restroom door and enter a damp room with a pink soap smell in the air. A few men are walking around the restroom completing their duties. I walk over to a free urinal and unzip my jeans. My right hand plucks my dick out and I hold it and I release my urine. Right on target. Just <laughs> explaining that he went to the bathroom to take a piss. It this There's nothing happens in the bathroom. He just leaves after that. He wasn't in the bathroom to avoid anything. He just had to go take a piss in the middle of dinner. And this was relevant to the scene somehow. It wasn't. It's just he wants to tell you about every meaningless detail. Like the thing that comes into the main character's vision. Because that's relevant somehow. As if we need every sensory detail to be added to this story yeah yeah there's a there's definitely a mistake a mistaking of like again this is kind of this is the same thing we've been talking about where it's like well if i just keep adding details but you don't but you can't you only add details where it is necessary or relevant like he makes a turkey sandwich like four times in the book paris (laughs) yeah um, it's just I took the bread out. I put the turkey on the bread. Then I added some cheese and some mustard. I sat down and I ate the turkey. There's no fucking plot line related to turkey sandwiches for any. Re- it's he'll just always describe what, what they order for food and like how many how many burgers are in there exactly. Yeah. Like big smokes order from GTA is it here? Two number nines, number nine large, one with cheese. I hate it yeah and and obviously Ugh. you know if you're writing <clears throat> something and a character is doing something mundane it is fine to describe that if it is giving me something if it, if maybe the character is having thoughts relevant to the plot while they're doing something mundane and there's like some kind of connection being made fine you know, like, I, I, there are so many reasons where you can do that and it is okay, but I, yeah, I don't but need to, to know. To just describe the pee break in the middle of dinner? <clears throat> yeah. I don't need to know about that. I don't care. There's nothing, it doesn't tell me anything about the character. Other than what, he didn't you fucking wash say- his hands when he pissed, but I could have <laughs> guessed that, you know? Uh. Thanks. You're right. For, it, you know, it it goes into so much detail and ain't shit about washing the hands so you know he didn't because he would have mentioned yep. it. Nope. Just whipped his dick out, touched his dick, and then he went right back to touching his steak tips And, and the whatever. smugness. The smugness at the end where he says, right on target. Congratulations, you can pee in a urinal? Chris, Chris, that is a... Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people get piss everywhere so you know what maybe it's to be Fine. celebrated I'll throw on a bone uh, no i i mean it's also a very smug and stupid fucking line to include i agree um yeah so uh do, all right question for you do you want to sing a song now or do you want to talk about the plot sure. and then sing a song yeah, let's, let's sing a like i actually okay. have a favorite song okay. in here that i now that I know that he actually recorded things, I kind of, because I know that the thing now we're doing is like, if we see song lyrics in a book, we sing them and I have to like compose a backing track to it. 
and I, you know, I feel like my work could have been saved if I, if, you know, we could have just pointed you to that. But this is, I guess, my favorite one. Like, here's the thing. I, there was like five or six songs yeah, that lot. had full lyrics posted here. Um, I'm pretty sure this isn't the one with the N-word in it. But if it happens here, I'm just going to stop short and not uh, say that one. Well, ha- hang on a second. Because um, there, uh, you know, the weird thing is that you were very sure that all the songs were made up. But then I found a Katy Perry song in here. Oh yeah, cause so like the first two songs, what the first is a Katy Perry song, and the one about she won't let me fuck. That's an that's a real song. Oh too. okay. But okay. everything, like just the way things are written, I'm pretty sure none of the rest of these are real. In fact, just to be safe, I'm just gonna copy paste the first line of this <laughs> one into good old Google Chrome, and we'll see if if, if anything pops up. Yeah, because I was, because, you know, I'm not a person who knows popular music, and the only reason I spotted the Katy Perry song was because. I am incorrect. I am incorrect. This is a T Pain song. Oh, okay. Maybe they're all real songs. Golden Rubbers in These Denim Pockets? Is that that a song? Golden Rubbers in These Denim (laughs) Pockets. Yeah, Tyler the Creator. That's a real song. Oh, my God. Are they all real songs? Shit. Wait, the one about the fighter jet? The one about the Wait, fighter jet? The f- I don't even remember that. Um, Hold on a second. This was a line that I was convinced could only be written by an alien. Okay. <laughs> In the pull quotes section over here, I had, I said, no, I don't like you. I just thought you were cool enough to kick it. Got a beach house I can sell you in Idaho. Since you think I don't love you, I just thought you were cute. That's why I kissed you. Got a fighter jet. I don't get to fly it, though. I'm lying down. Chris, that is the song Thinking About You by Frank Ocean. <laughs> I So I don't listen to any of this kind of music, so I didn't you know. know. What? You know what? I guess they're all real songs. I'm going to take the L on Shit. this one, Paris. I was like, wow, these lyrics are so fucking stupid. No way this <laughs> could be a real song. Um. Well. All right, Mr. Yang, I apologize. That's my bad. I mean, I don't think you have to apologize to him. He's the one <laughs> using copyrighted lyrics in full text in his book that he was trying to get money for. So, like, pretty sure if okay, you know, if the writing community hadn't eviscerated him, uh, you know, some some lawyers would have. You know, NBC Universal Media would have done it. Yeah. Okay. Now, okay, what's cool. This so I guess one? no songs. I'm sorry, everybody. No songs. What is this one? There's lines about a punk pussy. I. What is this? I'm not googling just those words, Patrick. You got to give me more than that. <laughs> uh, no, it's another Tyler the Creator song featuring Frank Ocean. Okay, so he's got some favorites here. Okay. Um, okay. All right. I guess I'm not a, fr- a Tyler the Creator fan. I don't know anything about either of them, so. Uh, all right. Well, sorry. I guess there's no yeah, no song game because it seems like all of these are real songs. I, I mean, I guess we didn't check all of them, but I'm not going to do that. So, oh, well. Yeah. You know what, Chris? Yeah. This is par for the course. Any fun we thought we were going to have fucking ripped from us. Gone. <laughs> nothing. We get nothing. <sighs> Good day, sir. All right. Um. Okay. So the set, so let's so, talk about the attempted plot, right? Sorry, Chris. Oh, go ahead. That's fine. I mean, sure. The central conflict of this book seems to be this demon woman wants to slowly eat me alive, but I might have sex with her if I let her, which is really telling on yourself about how desperate you are for sex. If you're like, well, she's like chewing on my heart. <laughs> like every other day and drinking my blood, but she might let me have sex with her. I guess that's fine, bro. If you're so desperate that you're getting routinely chomped and the blood sucked out of you for the chance, I would ask you to value yourself strong. Go to therapy. Men will, men will get eaten alive (laughs) instead of going to therapy. (laughs) Yes. Men will cohabitate with a vampiric succubus before going to therapy if it will get their dick wet. And that is what the story teaches us. I mean, it's again, it's pretty clear that also that her being some kind of supernatural blood sucking 
deity or not deity but uh creature mythical <laughs> not, not deity sorry he sure deifies my... her in, in the story yo my brain is oatmeal right now so i am very <laughs> sorry for any miss misspeaking misspakings i don't know um <clears throat> it's very clear that she has something going on and that it appears to be supernatural uh the, the book begins with her hiding in the bathroom and biting on her own hands and she goes to the doctor because she's biting herself all the time there's no resolution to that, but then we clearly see her graduate to eating a lot of red meat and then fi- and then drinking uh, whatever, Porma's blood. And she drinks his blood so much and so often that he'll just pass out for days at a time towards the end of the book. He's out for two weeks. I don't really know how that makes any sense, but, you know, nothing in this book makes sense. So... And his his job is fine. His job as like a limo escort. He has like a personal driver for the escort service or something. But he also has a job at a convenience store or a grocery store or something with Itenny. Yeah. So he and Itenny both work at the same. I'm not sure if it's a supermarket or a convenience store. Store. Quote yeah. Unquote. And then he is an, um an escort. Like he actually. He, I mean, he's a sex worker. He has sex with. 30 to 40s year olds women's as he likes to tell us every single time he has these work scenes because you know he has to service the women who are just too old to get it the women in their 30s and 40s (laughs) just wow so (laughs) yeah just bones and rags and dust Mm -hmm. And I mean, this isn't again uh, I will say this isn't uh, directly stated but it is heavily implied um, you know, so he is a sex worker, which I was really thrown by just because he's constantly calling Itenny a whore and a slut just for like existing and having sex with him. And it's like, what? I mean, she's not, she's not. Oh, you, yeah, oh, you mean this him? man might have a skewed idea of like gender roles and like sex <laughs> and responsibility with sex or like not even responsibility, but just like. You're right. Like, I, I didn't even think of that, to be honest with you. He's constantly in the book. She will be standing. Doing like nothing. Before, yep. Just existing, doing nothing. He's like, whore, bitch, slut. Mm-hmm. It's like, if anything, you're the actual sex worker. Not to denigrate sex right, work, right. by the way. But but if you're going to say, if you have that opinion, but you are the one who is whoring, how do you possibly reconcile that in your brain? The answer is you don't. The answer is you don't. Yeah. Simply because, Paris, reading this book, I realized this is like the perspective of a being that has no thoughts beyond just base desire, right? It's just, what food am I eating? I would like to have sex. Entertainment is fun. And any other possible emotional coloring to this, there is none of it whatsoever. And, like, down to, like, just, like, paying attention to stupid details, like, I had to take a piss. So here's a full description of the piss. Here's the full steakhouse menu. It's just, like, stream of consciousness. What is occurring in your thoughts at that very moment with no extra layer of, you know, an internal world? Yeah, there's no critical thinking in addition to just the things that are coming at you. Like, it's all just sensory perception and immediate reaction that's it there's like no critical thinking or 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 uh even a consideration of other people's thoughts you actually have a great segment to read about where he just realizes that other people are their own beings and he's like having Let his me, mind you know what? blown I'll just read that here yeah, why not yeah. why not just read that here because like just to give context here okay here's the paragraph it was just strange how she had hair eyes, a brain, and everything else equal to me. But there was something fundamentally different about her. The sense I got from her eyes, the unique physics of her hair, every small movement of her muscles and every action she did, little actions like her picking up her sparkle lemon drink can or sneezing were done in ways I never thought existed. It was just so different, like we each have a fundamentally different view of life and earth. Bro, yeah? Like, 
The, yeah. yeah the, the other things walking around out there speaking and talking and like driving cars and like, you know, assisting you at the grocery store and the women too. Turns out they have thoughts and feelings and mm-hmm. like experience things a little bit differently because it wasn't what you did. And so that's different. Uh, and yeah, they have hair and eyes and a brain like you. So, I, like, what do you say to that? This is like a fundamental rev. Like, this is the this is the deepest emotional point in the story. Is oh my god, she has thoughts. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that. <sighs> Everything in this book is so fundamentally broken, right? Yeah, it's like your main character is just now realizing that other people exist differently in the world. I, I and have had different experiences and aren't me. You're not me. Wow. I, I mean, there's and, and any passing reference to this outbreak of. Uh, widowing or AIDS two, you know the sequel. AIDS two was uh, mentioned early, like the first line, and it's just never brought up again. No, it is brought up again when they uh make a homophobic comment about it uh at one point in the book. But of course, cool. I mean, of course, the AIDS two outbreak is in Florida in this book, which um yeah, so there are passing references to newscasters talking about AIDS 2 or widowing or you know whatever and I mean it's it's just very clear that this was written probably because of the pandemic um the COVID-19 pandemic I'm saying because this was published published this was released into the world to feast upon our brains in 2021 um, and it's pretty clear that he had been setting this stuff up at, at the end of 2020. So I, I mean, it seems pretty heavily inspired by current events. I'm also just going to take a stab in the dark and say that this is probably based on his life. I don't think he has a woman drinking his blood and having sex with him and sleeping in his bed who wasn't <laughs> his girlfriend. But like, I do, I think he probably was at some point infatuated with a blonde girl with brown eyes and that's why that's our main character like yes do i think that maybe he lived in florida and maine probably also yes massachusetts gets a shout out woo home state <laughs> hooray uh, yeah um i it just uh, there's i don't know that uh my brain is in the right condition to articulate this thought well. But there is a particular flavor for self-insert characters, and I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. You all know it when you taste it. <laughs> like, there is something... Uh, there's something, like, you can just... It's easy. It, there's something about it. It leaves a stench when it when it leaves the room, you know? Um, and there is something about this book. That's self-insert? Did someone self-insert in here? Oh, come on. Well, remember, Itenny, Itenny self-inserts. She goes. <laughs> Let me just read that. Let me just read that section. Oh, I think, sure. I think we should just read a couple of sections because you need to get the flavor. Um, let's get the flavor that I'm talking about. All right. Chapter two. Part two of part one. Why did you need to write that? Summary. Oh, he explains underneath. System of limitations made me break up part one into two parts. Okay. I don't care. Um, You don't have to put that there. After passing by about seven stores, I dart into a store selling ice cream and candy. Itenny isn't inside. Let's see if that hot bitch slut can find me in here. She thinks she's so athletic. She has no muscle tone. Bert comes out of my butt. The store is surging with chatter among the patrons in here. Orange, bright light floods the room while tall glass displays separate the customers from the staff. A slightly sweet scent of chocolate fills the air. I step into the thick crowd to make my way to the staff. After taking one step, I turn around. Itenny is looking at me with a calm and intentional look as she wears a dark blue soft beanie with a sphere of fabric on its top. Itenny decks her head down and looks at her feet. Yawn. I'm just quiet.
Riveting, yep. right? Wow. So fun to read. Uh, let me... Let me... I've got some passages I could just read here to sprinkle in. I could not help but stare at cute Iteni. She looked like a Hollywood star of the past. Gleaming dark eyes conveyed whimsical feminine curiosity. A very grand yet hometown sensibility in her oval hair. Consolidated sweetness was tucked close to her quiet head behind her ears. I knew deep inside myself that I was stuck in my own past. Staring at the past was good, though. I mean, okay. I get, oval is certainly a new way to describe hair. Also, that line about consolidated sweetness was tucked close to her quiet yeah, head what? behind her ears. I don't know what that means. I, get, I guess you're trying to be a little poetic there. Like, there's just a little sweet kernel of, of corn or something behind her. I don't know what, man. All right. Well, all right. That was his attempt to describe a woman existing. I'm going to read the next part about um, him trying to describe the weather, the atmosphere, uh, the setting. <clears throat> As an outdoor chill and windy cloud stole our sleepiness from us, my bubble was gouged and purged of space. I twisted 80 degrees, shivering huh? from the momentum of Iteni's attempted cavity and cut. It invisibly what? stretched through me. Her process reverberated around my body, swishing and slapping air to the top of my forehead. I tilted back from head pressure. My mind pointed to that damn bag. My hands pointed to her shoulder. Shoes scraped as if we were running on a fabric, flying over the ocean, suspended by helicopters. I swiped up and down at the bag. A giant. A gorilla. I came for retribution. Sorry. Man, I can't hold it together today. That was... I... What do you mean? <laughs> and by the way, I remember that description because it, Chris, uh, before I started reading, Chris was reading ahead of me and he sent that snippet to me and I was like, what the fuck? And he was like, they're leaving a hospital. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? And then when you read the book, it's even more. Like, the more context you get, the worse your understanding becomes, which is not how it's supposed to work. Like, the context is that they went running out into the night naked in the rain, and, like, the police robots stopped them and made them go to the hospital. They fuck in a closet in the hospital, or no, she sucks his dick, whatever. They have sexual relations Maybe? in the closet. Yes, they do. Chris, they have sex many times in this book. I, I know it's confusing. But then but why the whole time is he like, I, well, I need to do, like, well, I just have to do it once with her. The whole rest they, of the book, he's like, I, have, just once, please. They very clearly have several, there are many sex scenes in this book. I I don't know. I mean, it's usually blowjobs and like oral and stuff, but then they definitely do anal and he definitely fucks her like at least twice. So I don't know. Sorry, diverting from the point here. So they go to the hospital and after they're, they like leave, they're walking out of the hospital and that's when that scene that... I just read occurs. And I, <laughs> I, all right. Uh, Chris, you're up next. <laughs> Please, oh, just, just, okay, just fine. All right, how about this? This is, this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven word sentence. Iteni says, bless you with a feminine popping tone. P Paris, please bless me with your feminine popping. How would you do that? The only thing that makes any sense is he means she had uh, a high pitch voice and that she was really hard on her plosives, like, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. <laughs> bless you. Like, that's the only thing I can think. But it's a very strange way. This, again, it's like, these aren't words that work in the English language to describe the noun you're trying to describe, right? Like, that adjective <laughs> and that noun do not go together. This is what, I, what I'm talking about. Who put these two, like, you open up, like, an old cabinet and, like, there's just, like, weird old pantry stuff in there. Like, why is the salt next to the chocolate? I guess they do kind of go together sometimes, but, you know, it's not usually you don't store them together. Yeah, we've all moved into a house and found some weird stuff in a cabinet. That's how this whole book is. The whole book is just <laughs> weird stuff you find in a house after you move in. Why are there coffee filters in the bathroom cabinet? Yes, right. Like, what? 
I'm trying to remember what uh, what was in here. Um, uh, all right, <clears throat> next one. Well, Chris, do you feel slighted by that just that quick one, or, or, or are you sure I, I can do this oh. next one? <laughs> Such a good one. The following I'm is jealous. the worst description of taking a shower I've ever yeah. read. This is by far the worst description of taking a shower. My feet drove me past the kitchen into the bathroom because, you know, I've got foot cars. Vroom, vroom. It had been long enough. I was ready to shower. My body was scrapped of its articles of clothing as I stepped into the shower. Psh, water spread out. Stingingly cold and eventually warm enough to sleep with. I stepped in and closed the curtain. The shower space was dim and dismal. I bowed to accommodate the head of the shower and was humiliated with thick, wet strands of black hair. I closed my eyes to prevent more pain as I massaged my wrecked scalp into wet, flowery, scented suds. The heat overwhelmed my face and the least water drips ticked me upon their departure from my face. I... The shower is humiliating. Are you so steeped in like Jordan Peterson alpha beta <laughs> talk that like the act of lowering your gaze to the ground of the shower like is emasculating? Like, fellas, is it gay to look down? Like, wh yeah. what? I mean, he's he's washing his hair with flowery scented suds. That fucking piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, all right, you know what? I'm going to do, I'm going to, is it okay if I do three because two of them are just one go sentence? Ahead. Okay. All right, go here ahead. we go. You know what? Here's another, here's another little like, like, uh, external setting, like atmospheric description. The night was very cold, fresh, sharp, calm, mysterious, and windy with my passion. Okay. Just Why? like really, this is the height of artfulness for this. Guy. Oh, here we go. All right, so, <laughs> it's a great one. This I uh, all right. By the this... way, if you think this next <laughs> thing will give you, like, if you think you understand what is happening here, this sentence <laughs> happened in the book, and I had no idea how or why or because if you have context for this, Paris, please tell me. I think I actually might have a, the longer passage. I'm just gonna read the whole passage. Um, <clears throat> go ahead. Nighttime. Still sitting, though I had a snack in place of dinner. Without a word from me, her ass reared into my face and tried to swallow my innocence. My wound looked like two dots, but it made my arm burn with spiciness. I had so much pain, suffering, and anger about even after her dry reverse cowgirl thrusting. My whole body felt sore, like she kicked me a lot when I wasn't consciousness. A hit, let me think. She put it in, and I stumbled a stable mumble. What the fuck was that hole? Sheets, what, pulls, licks. I kissed a girl and I liked her. Face <laughs> of cherry I kissed a girl just to try it. Buckling her legs, I found myself sitting on a one-seating chair. She stuck one leg past my two legs, put the other one in between my legs. How many legs? How many legs? Okay, I think there's five legs. Because, like, one plus two in oh, between, God. and then she put one over the other one that she had, oh. and one was still in between, so five legs. Leaning sideways of me and the chair facing me. We were both fully clothed, and she had a t-shirt and close, tight, dark blue jeans on. But that was my blood on her lips as she kissed and made out onto me. It felt so wrong, it felt so bright. I don't know the melody for that. The anger sent and caused by her bite made this fucking dry humping very favorable. Such a hot, small, attractive fucking girl. <sighs> How did that anger unlock me to experience her? I kissed a girl. I liked it. I liked it. Everything was rough, which was not right because it all looked smooth and slow. I started to grunt uncontrollably. Loss of blood. Tell me a kitchen knife is in my arm. The hurt and soreness by her mystery bruising and her meal brought clarity. Our love, lovemaking, as love is... Generally, love, no matter how unusual, 
is the heat it makes. How hot your nerves feel. The focus of parts and the focus of the minute. Lies and faking. Red blood flowing to said part. Enlargements swollen and unusual openness in our bodies. This mastery was crazy. The goodness from her. I held up to her pale, toned, firm, bare waist. And I watched her stare me as she turned hot, furnace hot in her waist. My fingertips felt cool and burning. The two sensations flipped after a minute. I almost came. I wanted to scream out of this pleasure, excitement, raw confusion, and running rage. I got to know her pussy, which was her bitch I just fed. <laughs> what? Do you see what I mean when I say incel Ulysses? <laughs> I... Do you see what I mean? <laughs> I wasn't planning on reading that. I'm really glad I did because I that that whole thing that I just read, that is what this whole book is like. You just get these random like song excerpts like, yeah, Katy Perry and I guess we're dry humping, but then we're fucking and she's drinking my blood and she's a bitch, but I like her. Oh. Ah, also, here's guy. what clothes she's wearing. I'm kind of hungry right now. All right, I'm, I know you said three in a row, Paris, but that was a pretty lengthy one, so I'm going to do the next one. We're just going to keep this train rolling. So if you have come unmoored from reality as well, listener, just lean into I, it. I mean, you... This is like auditory ayahuasca <laughs> yeah. at this point. Yeah, y'all can't see it. When I finished, I just threw my hands up in the air and spun around because I, I felt it. <laughs> I, there I you have go. lost my mind. Here's another one. As she stood up and took off her blindfold, I looked at her with an upset face. She looked at me for a long second and walked away to the kitchen. The sunlight replaced my view. She sat back down right next to me, touching our legs together as she dropped protein powder into her eyes. A few blinks later, she stood up and walked away without looking at me. I followed suit. Going downstairs, Itenny was laying in bed, diagonally from a far corner pointing inward. As her hair rested on the bed, she looked at the ceiling in an aimless manner as I walked over to examine some items on the top of my end table. I looked back and a smile had overcome her as she sat up out of bed and moved towards me. Jumping over to me, she air humped me while we were a foot apart, still smiling. She went to the wall and stood facing a few inches away from it. Before her hands moves anywhere, I touched her back to my back. She pushed back and away from the wall and our butts smushed together. Neutral again, she jumped over to me like a demented frog and humped in my direction, bumping into me. I let her impact sink in the side of my shoulder as her hair came close to my face. Turning my head to the staircase, I felt very sleepy. My head looked down for a second as I whispered, Fuck. Chris, can we, can we do a little stage blocking for this scene? What the fuck? All right, let's go through what the fuck happened. All right, so <laughs> scene opens. Itenny is blindfolded. She stands up, takes off her blindfold. Uh, Porma okay. looks at her and is you. upset. Itenny looks back at him for a long look and then just goes to the kitchen. The sun comes through the window. Itenny comes back and sits down next to Porma. Their legs are touching. And she is <laughs> dousing her eyes in protein powder inexplicably. I, I for, don't know. Um, for reasons... To get strong eyes, I need big, strong, strong eyes. eyes. I guess I should do that, really. <laughs> yeah, Chris. Oh, wow, this book solved your blindness. Look at that. Um, I know. Uh, so uh, after she's done blinking the protein powder into her eyes, she stands up and just walks away. He follows her. Uh, she goes downstairs. He goes downstairs to the bedroom as well. She lies in the bed diagonally. Uh, and she's just kind of like looking up at the ceiling. He walks over looks at some shit on the end table and then he looks back at her and she is smiling sits up out of the bed and starts m moving toward him then she jumps over to him and air him a foot away and she's smiling and air and, and then completely sane human behavior yeah right and then she goes to the wall a few inches away from it he touches her back, she pushes back, and then their butts slam together. Then she stands up straight, jumps over at him again, and humps. 
like a demented frog bumping into him. And then she hits the side of his shoulder with her hair. He looks at the staircase and is like, I'm fucking tired. Then he looks down and says, fuck. Like, why would that There's, ever happen? You, you just with you beings? just try you just said what the text was as if you were trying to convince yourself that something sane and re <laughs> like if you just repeated it, like you would finally get it. Like the afterlife love method of just say it a bunch of times and eventually your brain will connect the neurons together into something resembling a coherent idea. That's not what's <laughs> happening here. There's none of that uh... here. I what person would do any of this for what reason is this what he thinks like a cool girlfriend would act like yeah i mean so it seems like that that m made this feel like a seven-year-old trying to describe what he thinks a relationship with a woman would be like as an adult like because when you're a little kid you're like yeah my girlfriend would like she'd like do the chicken dance and hump at me like yeah <laughs> like that just seems like a little kids <laughs> we touched uh, yeah. butts we smushed our butts together yeah we together. smushed our butts together like yeah absolutely like that is what That's little what... kids in first grade are like yeah my girlfriend and i we like held hands and smushed butts like that's that's just <laughs> I... So it's really weird because there's this really intensely adult subject matter, right? You have all these really terrible expletives about, you know, like whore, cunt, and things like that. And then you have all these like, explicit sex scenes with cum and the old ladies double teaming him in a car, <laughs> which I can read if we'd like to hear that. Excuse me, 30 year olds. <laughs> like, yeah, old 30 year olds. Old, <laughs> old 30 year olds like me. Um, the yeah, ancient wise and crone. Um, <laughs> and, but but the perspective seems to be that of someone so detached from human reality that it's oh yeah it's almost like a little kid who just has no understanding of how people operate. It's okay. It's either a child or an actual alien life form. Those are the only options. I don't. And aliens, that's like, okay, I understand what humans like. They like food and mating and they like entertainment. I That's, you know, I, so I understand them. And then I will write this yes. story about two humans. Exactly. That is exactly what this feels like. Here's another alien line. Her head resumed a neutral position with easy chill. And she continued to trace her right hand's fingers around her plastic toy. God, I want to fuck her. How are... Why? Because she's... Got a toy? And she's holding it, a toy? Uh, I don't understand how those are connected. Yeah, I... Um, here's a really good, very early passage. Uh, they are... Atene and Porma are... It doesn't matter. The context doesn't <laughs> matter, Paris. No, there was... <clears throat> oh, I think this is when they're in the hospital. Not quite sure. Uh, in any case, they are... Oh, yeah, right. She She's going to her appointment for biting of hands. She's like, hi, I'm eating myself. I am experiencing auto-cannibalism. Help me. Um, and she's, like, filling out forms. And she says, Porma, do you remember what our house number is? I... So, <clears throat> lady doesn't even know number of her own house. By the way, it's her house. It's not his house. It's her house. Yeah. Like, I... That, that she affords with a I, grocery store job? Dude, I don't know. He describes her eyes as tasty. Per perhaps the most stunning statement to me, and I know we've got a full more, few more poll quotes here, but I really want to bring up, like, to me, the tr the the most exemplary passage was when towards the end of the book, he, like they're finally having like act, like penetrative sex, which I guess is like the the end all be all for him because he's acting like now finally they're actually having sex. Even though I even though they and I feel like that had happened before, but you're right. At the end of the book, same. It's very yeah. It's weird. Sorry. Continue. It's very celebratory to the point where, like, after he describes, you know, putting it in her, 
where she might be asleep to, by the way. She could have, she, she was saying things and was like having dialogue, but he was also like acting like she was asleep. So that's a whole other can of worms. But when when he is doing it, he used, he looked at the end of a sentence, it's like, I win. Yes. I win is his perspective for having intercourse, that there is a winner to it and the loser. I'm assuming it is perhaps the most misogynistic framing of in a sex scene I have ever seen. Unparalleled. Well, yeah. I mean, if you want to, if you want to gamify your life and treat your sexual partners like objects that are there to only please you, then yeah, of course you feel like you win because that's your frame for existence. It's terrible, but literally the most disgusting sentence in the book was that part for me. Uh, well, I got I got another passage for you, Chris. Okay, just, yeah, continue to kill us. I mean, I'm also killing myself. This is a murder-suicide, to be clear. This is... Fair enough. (laughs) We're going out together. Her lips are still shiny. They are nice and round and slightly pointy. Light Light breaths... Light breaths begin to emanate from my tenny's mouth. She tilts her head a little to one side and slowly looks down from my face to my belly button. I look forward at the TV. Itenny takes one of the remaining sandwiches from the plate, a beef one, and gets a decent grip on it. Uh, mm. (laughs) The top... (laughs) Slippery sandwich, I don't know. (laughs) The top of the sandwich's bread begins to develop crevices and cracks from her hand's pressure. Excruciating sandwich bun detail. She. <laughs> oh, the top of the sandwich is bread. Thanks for telling me. I didn't. I wouldn't have thought of that. Because when I think of a sandwich, I don't usually think of bread being on top. She makes a first bite, which goes nearly all the way to the middle of the burger. Her preceding bites rapidly consume oh. the entire thing riveting riveting section thank you um, i didn't I, I thought was she gonna stop in the middle of the bite i was so interested to know oh there's more the next line is no. i i just really fucking like her she is so perfect and hot and pretty i just want to kiss her a lot and slide my dick between her tits and let her tit fuck me i want to fuck her every night and every morning i want to bang the shit out of her and make her scream but why is she so quiet Why is she so shy? I want to spend all day with her. We could roleplay all kinds of sex scenarios. She could suck my cock to the rhythm of a hentai video. I wonder if she would like to be skull fucked. I wonder if she wants or likes having sex multiple times a day. She is so, 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 so pretty. She is elegant like the flower on a lily pad. Her legs are graceful like tree trunks. She is so nice and she always stares at me. I want her to give me morning blowjobs. I want to hear her moaning. I want to fuck her doggy style. She gives me so much energy. I can do so much more when she is here. Maybe I should invite her to dinner again. Maybe she does like me. I know all of the signs by now. Her body is so hot. She looks irresistible in tight clothes. She clearly likes being close to me. I'm so close to getting what I want. I want her to be happy. She is so sexy. Good lord. (sighs) Yep. Good god. By the way, there's a point at the end of the book, like I think like when they are having like the the final sexing or whatever, where he just starts repeating gentle por- itenny, soft itenny, gentle itenny, uh. soft itenny, soft itenny. And I thought so like I was about to turn around and like she would be behind <laughs> me and like consume me. Yeah. Yeah. I. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Paris, I got two more poll quotes here, and then we got to get the fuck out of here, man. Well, like, I, yeah, I'm sorry. I do want to have a light, another, I w- do you want to have a wrap-up conversation after you're done with passages? Yes, yes. I a understood. brief, a brief Okay. The, yes, yes. We got another episode to do after this. It's already 1030 at night, just so you guys yeah, know. I, yeah, again, we started four hours late because I just, I was clinging to life, trying to get through this thing in one go. Okay. Here's just a, a, I want us to try to make the sound that is described in this sentence. Her sigh sounds like a combination of a sigh, a moan, and a loud yawn. So Paris, please, what what would this sound like? Uh, I don't know. I'm not really sure. I tried. 
I think it, like you kind of chained it together to three separate things. I think it's going to be like all at once kind of a thing. So it's going to be like, huh? <laughs> perhaps maybe <laughs> any of those. <laughs> I'm Alan. That's what the sound is. That's what I okay. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Discovered. That's that actually makes the most sense. <laughs> All right, here's my final poll quote. I take the sandwich with one hand as Ateni looks up at me with her eyes. Fucking sandwich, play by place. Taking a decent bite out of a quarter of the sandwich. Horma says, do you, have you seen any nice dogs outside lately? Ateni says, nah, just a small white poodle here and there. Oh, yeah. She crosses her right leg over her left leg and starts to watch the TV. Like, a lot of leg play-by-play, -play too, I'm just now realizing. I also begin to watch the TV as I take small bites out of the burger. Black man. Man, that gym full of students was off the chain. Oh, yeah, we forgot, about, we forgot about the casual racism. There's um a few characters referred to as just the black man or a black man, and they are characters on... TV, like being interviewed for things. Um, yeah, and they are just, yeah, shitty stereotypes. Just imagine what you think this person yeah. would write when he says, okay, this is a black man that is speaking, and guess what? It's, you're probably on the money. I don't even know. I mean, I kind of, I feel like we should have done more dialogue because it's so strange. Um there was enough dialogue, I think, that we did there, but like I, yeah, it's fine. We don't, we don't need to. I don't. Perhaps you know what, mm. Paris? I think every once in a while, like this should be a punishment that happens to one of us on an ep. Like if someone does something wrong on an episode, we should have to scroll through the Google Doc we created of all the text in this book and just randomly land somewhere and have to read that passage out loud. That should be like some kind of punishment. If one of us does something bad on an episode. <laughs> this book forever punishment. Yes. I mean, it's already in my life. It's already forever punishment. Um, True. I am now brain poisoned. Yeah. The spiders are in my brain and yes. they're gently smoothing it over. God, I keep looking for dialogue and I keep just landing on either them talking about sex or them talking about food they're ordering. Like, that's all I've been able to find. For the last two minutes, I'm just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Because there's no, like, like they just, like, would you, you want to go to work today? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's the strangest. There, there's the dialogue, Paris. I saved you the fucking work. It's just so strange. And there's, the other thing we didn't mention is the other weird thing about the formatting is not only how the dialogue is written out, but there's a lot of um sounds are written out. Like, there's a lot of attempted onomatopoeia, like, slurp, like, and and stuff. And I remember this came up in another episode, and you said that that is a common thing in anime, right? Yeah. Yes, like, you were a lot of, on oh, manga, manga specifically, you'll, you'll try Sorry. to, like, see onomatopoeia written out for, like, a lot of different things. Yeah, so clearly influenced by that. Um, and there's, oh, there's even say. some emojis in the text, which is odd. Um, or not... A screenplay. It's a screenplay. Paris. Yeah, I. <sighs> yeah. So anyway, I mean, everything about this, every element of it was bad. To recap, the characters, dialogue, plot, descriptions, uh, just the the physical construction of the thing was <clears throat> difficult to follow, confusing. Horrendous world building, irrelevant details, yeah. even stuff that you think might lead to a plot eventually goes nowhere. Yeah, I... At the end of this, is it terrible that someone could feel this way about women? Yes, and, and before anyone's like, oh, but you don't know if the author feels like the way the character does. I don't know that you would write this if, <laughs> if you didn't feel this way. So... This does not feel like a parable no. where Pormo, like, comes to a realization... No, um, yeah, there's no, um, there's no, yeah, there's no realization, there's no character growth, the dialogue is alien, I, the whole thing is very alien in that it, 
strings together words and descriptions that don't help you understand. Like I said, the more context you get, the more words you get, the more confused you become, which is the opposite of how language should work. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Generally, when I say something, you should have better understanding. Right. So I'm not really sure. I, I don't know. Like I said, I, at the top of the show, I am really just left with. sadness and anger that someone has had to exist in the world and end up with this kind of thinking and you know i know that it i mean at least from what you saw on reddit it seems like people probably you know really tore into him for this and understandably so i mean it seemed like he needed a reality check although the internet can be unnecessarily cruel so i'm i'm sure that it was a reality check he was not anticipating and probably didn't feel great but we we all have those lessons where we learn self-awareness uh we learn that maybe something we did was really cringy or you know terrible and we have to make a change and all i can hope is that the author learns from this experience and doesn't go further down you know the the incel hole but unfortunately that is what happens a lot because you know the backlash is so severe that they just go back into their echo chambers and i i hope that doesn't happen here but of course i don't think we'll have any way of knowing i mean like i said before we don't really do any deep generally don't do any deep uh background research on stuff because we want to try to keep our you know our opinions free of any coloring uh, or opinions of others on the internet so, I don't know. I mean, beyond what Chris saw in the post and beyond what I found, you know, just finding some images and the soundtrack for the book or whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, judging by the fact that everything is taken down and only on, on archive.org makes me think this person went into hiding, which, you know, probably good. I I just wonder... No, I'm thinking of if there's anything else to say. I guess the only other thing I might have to say is, you know, this was like a part one. Uh, and I don't know that if it's your first work, you really need to be like working on an opus that's like multi parts. Yeah. You know, maybe if if it's your first thing, I would just just do a contained story, perhaps, uh, or you know, or uh, a short story even. I mean, something like... Uh... We've seen a lot of attempts at serialization being the first attempt out, and I think that's just a poor choice. That's not necessarily what's happening here, but it's kind of alluding to that. I yeah, think. I mean, it, it seems like there were going to be more chapters, you know, or, or who knows, maybe there were, and he didn't put them out after what happened with the first one. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not really sure what to say. I just hope that this person grows from this and touches some grass, you know. And, and I, I really think this person just needs more experience with other human beings. And I'm not saying that in a in a yeah, cruel way. Like, like, you really just got to be more social, be out I in the world. Agree. Like, because that's... It's hard. <laughs> it's not easy. I, you know, I'm still learning to do it. I'm pretty terminally online myself, but I would recommend that you log off yeah. and just go out and try to like interact with other people. Don't like go up to strangers on the street all the time trying to be like hello, but like, you know, like go do like have a hobby that makes you interact with others, and that's gonna, you know, cause you to just generally have a better understanding of you know the people outside there they have hair and eyes and a brain and they've experienced things from a different perspective yeah, than you i um yeah and and i want to say that i think i can i can comfortably say that you know chris and i were not popular children <laughs> as you probably can imagine oh. uh we we both grew up pretty terminally online in the 90s and early 2000s um so it's not like we're strangers to isolation or feeling like you don't, you know, you don't fit in or unwelcome in your, in your 
in your society or your neighborhood or city or whatever. Like, we've been through that. You know, it's not as though we don't understand, but it, you know, <laughs> you just, like Chris said, you got to have hobbies that aren't on the internet sometimes. Like, that is just a healthy thing. A little variety in life is good. A little bit of not being on a computer is good. Um, I, and it, this isn't me being, like, shaking my fist at computers as an old 30-year-old. Um, this is <laughs> me saying... Uh, computer, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy computers. I think that being on the internet, you know, definitely shaped me as a kid and, a, and, and as an adult. Mm -hmm. It's not all bad, but like everything, there is new, there's nuance and moderation. Like you gotta go for a walk outside, go for a hike, rock climb, I don't know, run, lift a weight. Join a hiking group, go to a yeah. gym and like, you know, ch talk to people in the fitness class, not just the women, <laughs> not just the women that you want to have sex yeah. with. Um, the other people pursue too. art or music. I mean, yeah, if you want to write great, but um, get other readers. I don't know. I mean, the beginning mentions like friends and family and it, I, man, I hope that they weren't just you know, this could be a case of people just being unwilling to give negative criticism and that's how this person ended up where they were. So, you know, keep that in mind. Don't, yeah, don't give fake positive Sometimes criticism. the harshness of the internet can be, like, illuminating? Yeah, uh, rarely, but yes, it can be. I think in this case, yes. But I did, when I was looking uh, to pull up the archive.org, is it archive.org? That wherever this is archived, I found a few other links um, related to the story, and it looks to be the author's website and some kind of accessory links related to book to the book. Chris, these are my gifts to you. <laughs> I would like you. Oh. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna share my screen <laughs> so oh. you can. Oh no! Enjoy this. Um, oh no! Yeah, don't. I thought the pain was over. <laughs> no, you need to experience the acute pain that I have <sighs> had to endure this day. I thought I got through it. No. Mm -mm. All right. So, this is the author's. Uh, okay. Oh. This is the author's website, and you might notice it says soundtrack, original oh. music to accompany. <laughs> Splattering yet endearing. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> well. Oh, no. <laughs> for your. Oh, okay. thank God. Yes. Oh, the video is unavailable. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, you. Uh, I feel like I just dodged <laughs> like a full clip of, <laughs> of bullets. So, yeah, the author went so far as to make an original soundtrack to this book like thing. Um. And unfortunately, you know, the the songs were taken down along with the book and all, all of the splattering it and during paraphernalia. Uh, so I just wanted you to know, though, this person published this in earnest and had a website with a soundtrack. Writing advice? Yeah. Wait, there's, yeah. So, so there's yeah. a writing that advice was, yep. tab for yep. money there that, yep. he is charging money mm -hmm. for writing advice paris yes this was the other part of my present to you <laughs> this person uh was offering yeah uh private consulting beta reading fiverr services and advice blog posts I don't know that any of these links work anymore. I think I clicked on some and they were like, oh, that page wasn't archived. Ooh, maybe this one was. So this author thought that they were so good at writing that they should actually be charging other people to get their advice. I, I... Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's two presents. Do you have any more presents for uh -huh. me? Uh-huh. I also have, okay. um, well, I guess this is I sort of part asked. of it. So he made um, Twitter accounts for the main character. No. And this is a thing that existed no. in 2020. So, you know, we're talking no. year before the book was published. Yep, there's a bunch oh, of there's fan art. art. There's uh, oh. fan art. Who? Well, not fan art. I'm sorry. I misspoke. There's <laughs> clearly... His art, I think, or maybe commissioned commissioned art is what I meant to say. There's also there was also a Twitter for the book itself. 
Uh, and that's the okay. book cover. That's the book cover. Uh, that was my last present. Was this was the cover? Yeah, I saw that on Amazon when I, oh, okay. I looked at that okay. before. So I, this is this is not new, it's but just... it's literally just <laughs> a portrait of some lady, which lady. is you know the central figure of this whole thing. Wow, a lady. Yeah, the cover is you know it's not great. It's fine. He clearly commissioned. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, so it's billed as a sci-fi series. Well, I mean, I got that point, of course, while we were reading it, but, you know, it's um, it's really unclear, let's say. Yeah, I, um, I don't really know what else to say. I, I, my only guess is this person must be very young, very isolated, or both. So, um... This is somebody who I think just uh, needs more, clearly needs more practice and also just more life experience. That's something that really struck me in reading this was this is somebody who just doesn't have enough experience with other human beings in social settings, in, you know, in familial friends. I mean, it's th there are just some things in this book that really... Uh, or not some things. The whole book feels like an alien wrote it. And I know that we've said that before. But this... This is... In many ways. <sighs> remember, how e. we will get... remember how E.T. was horny for Elliot's mom? It's like yeah. it's like he came back to Earth and wrote this. About, <laughs> like, that's what this He's is like. He's just so obsessed with... All he can think about is her curves and her butt and her hair. And the and shower her scenes. Her and her shower life. scenes, you know, very similar. Um, but anyway, yeah, this, I think this, this person just needs more life experience. That's off the internet. I think out of, you know, put, I put agree. away your hentai for a little while. Like you're only, you know, be an adult for a few more years now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, we could, you know, could be totally off about this, but it, this seems like a young yeah. person who hasn't had a lot of yeah. social interaction and doesn't get out much. And that's why everything is so bizarre in this text. Um, All right. Yeah. I don't know. I hope, I hope they find a new group of writers. I hope they try again after being an adult for a few more years, <laughs> as you said, Chris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. can we fix this, Chris? You gotta be shit in Paris. <laughs> okay. No, nope. Uh, yeah, this is like E.T. coming back to Earth, getting red pilled and writing a fan fiction about Elliot's mom. Like, I like I just I don't know. Yeah. Uh, just have some non transactional friendships and relationships with people develop life experience. Try again later. Please don't try to write like a a weird obsession like porno again. I would say this is not your special. It's not your jam. Do something else. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, if you've survived this long, <laughs> I, I guess you're still here. Congratulations. Welcome to Brain Spider Land. Do you do you name the spiders in your brain? I call the main one Frankie. Oh, I mean, I thought we both had little Tereblos in our brain at this point. True. Whatever. It's like the Yerks from Animorphs or whatever, just wrapped around. Do you know the brain. I've never read an Animorph? Oh. That's that's do you want to do you want to anyway. know? No, we're gonna talk about this real quick. Um, little baby <laughs> Paris was uh, I I remember seeing the book covers at like the book fair and going, eh, those graphics look bad. <laughs> like even as like a seven year old, I was like, nah, that looks bad. Oh, I knew <laughs> they looked like shit, but I was still like, whoa, turned into an animal. It's cool, and I wanted to read. I them was anyway. too into Fear Street and like the American, uh, what is it? Dear America series, like the historical girl oh, diaries. Fuck, <laughs> like I was, I don't know. I was a nerd. Um, yeah. Any, anyhow. Um, what were we saying? Are we thanking patrons? Yes, that we we have to do this. Thank you, patrons. I feel like we owe them and... something else after this. <laughs> and bringing us to this like precipice of madness. 
All right. Thank you, Greg, Veronica, Will, D, Jared, Arant, Senior, Jakub, Lycoris, Elliot, Kieran, Martin, Luchek, Miri, Yanka, David, Anya, Patricia, Austin, Donnie, Beast with the Least, Scott H., Robin, Lakstodes, Of the Void, The Taco Eating Unicorn with Oval Hair, <laughs> Last Man on Earth, 01, Funny Robot with Antennas, Hobby Boy 93, Harry, Renee, Emmy, The Ugly One, Bleach, Black Cat, Julius, The Nice Dragon, our Kofi Donor Kiwi thing, and our newest patron, Eastern Swiss. Ooh, a cheesy patron, perhaps. You know, Chris, before we go, I just want to confirm something with you. This is the worst sure. thing we've ever read for the show, isn't it? Oh. Oh, handily, Paris. Yeah. We don't need to debate that at all. This is far and away. Uh, uh, like, Maradonia is, you know, <laughs> like a, a hill in comparison to the fucking mountainous <laughs> effort of terrible that we see I, here. You know, I've thought about this, that it's really tough to... There are some, there are so many that you just, it's hard to rank because they're, they're so deeply terrible in certain ways that are not necessarily tiered, right? But I think, I, I've always, we've always held episode 50, The Eclipse of Darkness, as kind of our last, the last mountain. It was a special moment. (laughs) It was a special moment, I would say. It was. Like when you and I reached the end of that book, I think like I was like, okay, <laughs> she's in here with me for like for real, for real. Like I you know, that's like coming out of the trenches was that book. I think this book is like you and I coming out the other end of like the zombie apocalypse that is also, you know, everything is on fire and lava at the same time and also there was like a pandemic going on and also like there's a rock in your shoe. Okay, so you mean approximately like 2063. <laughs> okay. Sure. So yeah. we're prepared is what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, this might... I, I don't know. It's hard because there have been other ones with also very harmful ideas, but this one has harmful ideas, no coherence, no edit. I mean, it's just got it's just got like zeros across the board. I think this might be the new reigning champ. This might be the book to beat. I I agree. If something beats this Paris, I will like I don't see what I could be other than a gibbering wad. <laughs> like there was there would there would be nothing left. Yeah, that was I mean I cried multiple times just trying to read a menu <laughs> like that's, you know, <laughs> that's that's what this book brought me to. Um Wow. All right, so I guess challenge accepted by the patrons here. See if you can turn us into gibbering walls. Oh, please don't. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, whoever posted this on Reddit. Usually we like to thank the Redditors if we know, but I guess maybe we don't in this case. All right. Well, Paris, I'll see you for whatever's after. Th- this was the exact halfway <sighs> point of the year for us, by the way. We're recording this well before the halfway point, of course, but like this is the exact middle of the schedule. So, like to place this as the peak, perhaps it'll be a nice soft come down after this. We'll I see. don't remember what's after this, and now I'm now I'm scared. Uh, all right, folks. Well, okay. thank you for being with us today. We hope that you were able to have some deeply sad laughs with us. Um, and please remember that there is a lot of other work out there that's great. It's a lot. A lot of things are good. Life is cool and fine. Yes. Please yeah. don't don't let good. this bring you down. Uh, we will yeah. we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you. Remember that food exists and it's good. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Terrible Book Club. Terrible Book Club is an independent podcast produced by your hosts Paris and Chris. Sound design and audio editing by Chris, with sound effects and music by Epidemic Sound and sometimes also Chris. Our theme song is Kiss by Yearn, which is, you guessed it, actually, also Chris. You can find more of his soothing synthy sounds on Bandcamp at yearn.bandcamp.com. Do you want us to review a book of your choice on the show? Do you want access to some extra audiovisual weirdness? If so, become a patron at patreon.com slash terriblebookclub. If you'd like to send us a one-time tip instead, you can do that at ko-fi.com slash terriblebookclub. You can also support TBC for free by sharing the show on social media, following our accounts on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or Goodreads, telling your friends about your favorite episode, 
or by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, or anywhere else on the internet. To send us book recommendations or your adorable pet photos, send an email to terriblebookclub at gmail.com. 